Hello, Grandpa, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, I decided something pretty big. I decided that I am going to be doing a new book club. Now, this might not be new. Somebody probably has it already anyway. But, I figured it would be fun. This is episode one. I don't really know how to have, like, a real show, but episode book club. Today I'm going to be reading The Story of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter, illustrated by Lisa McHugh. Right there. This is a childhood favorite. Like, I've had it since I was two, so definitely like it. I'm gonna read it and then I'll show you the pictures. Or maybe I should do it. Uh, no, that'd be hard. I'm gonna read it and then I'll show you the pictures. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a big fir tree. Oh, I have to show you the picture. A big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but you can't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there, and he was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Run along and don't get into mischief. I'm going out. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Contail, who were good little bunnies, went down to the lane to gather blackberries. You can like pause the video to read it if you want. Anyway, yeah. And then, but Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the key. First, he ate some lettuces and some crunch beans, and then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley around the end of a cucumber frame who should he meet but mr mcgregor mr mcgregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages but he jumped up and ran after peter waving a leg and calling out stop being peter was dreadfully frightened he rushed all over the garden for the he had forgotten the way back to the gate he lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe among the potatoes. You can read it and pause the video and read it if you want. He ran on four legs with then and went faster. And he might have gotten away altogether if he had not run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost and cried. Mr. McGregor had a basket and was put it on to pop it on top of Peter. Uh, was about to, but Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind. Again, you can pause the video. I'm not going to keep reminding you, but you know now. He rushed into the tool shed and jumped into the watering can. It would have been a perfect hiding place if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter had was somewhere in the tool shed and began to search it carefully. Then Peter says, Ker Yeah, I think that's how you say it. Curdy or something like that. And Mr. McGregor was after him in no time. Peter was trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea where to go. He was also very damp from sitting in that can. He tried to find his way straight across the garden, but became more and more puzzled. He came to a pond where a white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very still, but now in the tip 
of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it w was best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, Benjamin Bunny. turned back towards the bull shed when he heard the noise of a t of a he turned back towards the tool shed when he heard the nose noise of a hoe scratch 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 peter scuttered underneath the bushes when nothing happened he came out and saw mr mcgregor hoeing onion he his back was towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Peter started running as fast as he could go. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last and looked outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the birds, the blackbirds. Um, if you don't know what a hoe is, it's like a like kind of like a rake anyway it's hard to <laughs> anyway i know this video is kind of long for a video usually i don't even post this long of videos but today i have to because i read kind of slow out loud i read really fast in my head but not yeah anyway i should practice more Peter didn't stop running until he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down on the floor and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second jacket and pair of shoes Peter had lost in two weeks. <laughs> this is the photo. Peter did not feel very well that evening. His mother put him to bed and gave him a dose of chamomile tea. One tablespoon should be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. He must have learned his lesson. It's the last photo. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm honestly so bored that I might even post another one today or tomorrow who knows yeah so thank you all so much for listening to my book well not my book but the new book club series and I hope you all have a day bye <laughs> Ooh, what should my outro be hmm comment down below if you can. I don't know. The comments might be disabled. Anyway, just... Yeah. <laughs> anyway, peace out.